So they've got open cog. Yes, yes, that's really red light. Yeah, also, yes. I don't have a card anymore. Essentially, use that and others to create. Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to get AGI using these narrow AIs. Yeah, that makes two of us. Tied together. Uh, you were doing the singularity <laughs> net as well? No, 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 but I'm trying to do But so, wait a minute. Let me unpack what you were just saying. So, open cog is not. My observation is a total mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's why it's open source. Is trying to yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we were interested, there's a, there's a thing actually, this thing called Psych, which this guy, Doug Lanat, who's based on right. I just spent yeah, that's uh, 35 years working on, and that's a much cleaner version of something like it. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, open cog kind of branched <laughs> off from this project. Um, but even that, we've not really managed to find uses. We thought we had one great use, which was word problems in mathematics. So, for example, somebody says, you know, you put five, you know, marbles in a bag. How many marbles can you see? And that depends on knowing things about. But, but, but I think. Um, no, but so I don't. So what is this project? Uh, so yeah, it's, it's trying to. It knows OpenCog isn't that great. So it's trying to create a marketplace where people can contribute their own algorithms, their narrow AIs onto the platform, and the tokenomics takes them for the incentivization of that. So if it's, it's an interesting idea, I can't believe it works. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's just gone into the world. Do you know Michael Howard? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys? Yeah. yeah. You know Michael Howard? Yeah. No, is he part of uh, the team as well? Yeah, I think so. But he, I was just talking to him the other day. Oh, well, yeah. So, so I'm going to write myself a note yeah. to look that up. So yeah. it says yeah. Cigar Howard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the one that's um, meant to be so powering Sophia Robot, you know. The, so you're mapping different narrow AIs together, you're saying? Uh, they're creating a marketplace that if some someone has a problem to solve, they can go to that. The and problem, the problem so is that intelligence does, does not try to eventually get to that. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, one issue with that that I would immediately see is intelligence does not have a simple idea. No. So in other words, you can't. You know, if you say let's just plug together all these things. What the heck are you actually plugging? Because, yeah. you know, for example, we, the thing is, we don't fully understand how the brain works as yeah. well, which is a big. I think we talked about this as well. We're like yeah. way far off. But, but the yeah, brain has a certain yeah. architecture that we did enjoy. But the well, brain also is not. Which is another first first point is it's not obvious yeah. that emulating yeah. the brain yeah. is the right way yeah. to yeah. achieve yeah. Yeah. Just like you know, useful intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Right. Um, And uh, you know, in fact, the main thing that's happened right now is you know all the progress in artificial neural networks. The people who study brains are saying, gosh, we can get new intuition about how brains work mm -hmm. from seeing what happens in artificial neural networks, even though the detailed mechanics are a bit different. Right. Um, well, that was Jeff Hinton's original idea, which is I'm going to back, I'm going to reverse engineer the brain. That's why he went into AI in the first place. Because he was super interested in You know, I talked to a bunch back in those days, so let me see if I believe I'm, that this is a narrative. And so, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, it's some, let's see, do I believe in that narrative? Interesting question. Well, yeah, it might be. Do you, see, do you see him quite often at the yeah. university? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, work at, I work at Vector and so, so. Oh, that's awesome. So we see him sometimes. So. Yeah. He's mostly in Google right now. Yeah. yeah. But he's a chief scientific officer, but he's never there. Yeah. He's doing so much stuff. Yeah. He doesn't teach a lot. We haven't been in discussion with Ben, I guess. So I, I, in the past years, I have. Yeah. 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 Even before he ran for so, president so, uh, and so on. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, he's, yeah. <laughs> right, but I mean, I think that it, it's funny. I mean, he, it, probably been a few years since I've been to I know he's going. Well, where is he these days? He's somewhere else in Hong Kong. I wanted to gauge your interest on something. When we were talking about, the, you know, when AI creates its own con contract, we'll, we'll be able to edit it. But what you're saying is it's important to be able to edit that contract. What happens when they're creating their own contracts that we can't understand, so then we can't edit it? Right. The best we can that. expect to do is to have sort of contracts that constrain what's going on. And so inside yeah. there are all these kinds of things bubbling around, but somehow we are constraining, you know, we're saying, and in the end, everything has to satisfy this sort of, uh, ex, you know, this, this global yeah. common yeah. law or something. There's this interesting fact I was thinking of. When you look at human population, we've had millions over the years now, you know, or billions, and you have anomalies, psychosis, right? Like you have like serial killers and stuff. And sometimes those rise up to be, you know, dictators and kill a lot of people, but then you know the general population calms them down. And so one idea that I was thinking of is what if you have a similar structure with AGI? When you have those inherent bugs, if the population controls that single one. So, so what you're saying is don't just have one AGI, have you know, ten billion AGI. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know. I mean that's that's it's just a random idea. 
Right, but I mean, you know, with programs, you can certainly generate diversity in programs. Yeah. And you can yeah. say, you know, let the programs have an ecosystem of their own. And right. yes, that will, I mean, to some extent that will happen. To some extent that already happens. Yeah. In something like financial markets, you'll have automated trading systems exactly. that yeah. are interacting yeah. with, each other. with each other. Well, the discrepancy between AGIs, though, would be very different to humanity because humans are sort of still limited within a band range of IQ, whereas super intelligences might be well, that's what we significantly. Think. Well, I'm not yeah. sure that's I'm, yeah, I don't think yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that's not correct. Sure. I, mean, I, I, yeah. I, I think that one we feature of this yeah. principle of computational equivalence is right. that there isn't a... There isn't a... They think we have like, some crazy analytical ability, but just because we haven't reached the, gla the glass ceiling yeah. doesn't mean there isn't. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, I think, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I wonder, because I like to figure out, you know, in my life I try to automate things, and I try to be as efficient as I can, and I automate it as much as I can, and I kind of wonder, imagine if I was much smarter than I am, you know, what, would co what consequences would that have? What would I be able to do then that I can't do now? And there are clearly some things, but many of those things are things that I can externally automate. Yeah. Like, you know, for example, you know, I have a pretty good memory, but I also have, you know, every piece of email, every document I've written, I have scanned, I can search it all. So, you know, m me plus my outsourced yeah. memory is really yeah. quite good. And parallel processing. How many so you don't have to you on one thing? Oh, I don't know. Many at all. I mean, my, my memory of, of uh, it's not the kind of thing that I fill my memory up with. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's um, uh, I, I have found that um, I have this theory, you know, I've studied several automata and things like that, and I'm really good at recognizing patterns there. But I, I had this theory a number of years ago, it's kind of a joke, that I'm really bad at recognizing human faces. And there's this particular part of the brain, the fusiform gyrus, that is responsible for face memory. And I, I had this kind of joke that I filled up my fusiform gyrus with oh, no. automaton patterns, but there's no room for human That's faces. Right. Oh, we're gonna have like better yeah. reality glasses help with that, right? Um, <laughs> I have a quick question. If you weren't doing what you were doing and you would like to work or devote some time on AI for good, what would that potentially be? AI for good, I mean, you know, I mean, my, my point of view, so one, one feature of, okay, so if you look at the world and sort of the, the inequalities in the world and so on across different places, you know, one of the things that's remarkable, okay, so for example, consumer electronics is something that's very flat across the board. It could have been the case, you know, back 30, 40 years ago, I was very proud of the fact that I used the fanciest computers, and those computers cost, you know, half a million dollars or something, and I was using a much fancier computer than anybody else. But today, like a I'm using, yeah, 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 those types of things. But today, I'm using the same computers everybody else is using because consumer electronics flattened out. Um, and, uh, you know, now there are other areas like, for example, medical technology, which is not flat yet. Um, you know, it's still, there's a, there's a high end. And I think the opportunity with, with AI, one of the opportunities is, it's really pretty, you know, it's potentially pretty flat. Um, and it's, um, you know, and it has, you know, the way I like to think about it, this sort of computational universe of possible programs is something you can mine for useful technology. It is something that is global to the universe, so to speak. It's not something where one country happens to have more oil underneath that country, so to speak. Yeah. It's something that anybody gets to. But I think the main, the main thing that is an issue these days is, you know, this idea of computational thinking, learning computational language, things like that. There is dramatic inequality yes. in how that is being done. And you know, I've been interested in a bunch of countries around the world we've worked with. You know, how do you teach kids in these countries this kind of thinking? And it is actually a bit paradoxical right now because actually the U.S. is one of the hardest nuts to crack in that regard oh, because yeah. because it's you know yeah. oh, because of the digital divide no because because of fragmentation in education in the U.S. Okay. because there are countries where you say you know there's an education minister and they say this is what's going to happen and it happens yeah, right. Yeah. right I'm from Morocco so yeah. okay so that's probably an example yeah. Yeah. right but I mean you know and sometimes crazy things happen and sometimes it's poorly implemented but in the U.S. There are you know tens of thousands of school districts, and they all do different things. And the stuff that's in common is very, you know, very low level. So 